Hey y'all, this is Jay from Sophos Support, and today I'll be talking about Sophos Connect Client version 2.1. Sophos Connect is a secure VPN client that you can install on Windows and Mac computers. It allows you to connect off-site employees to internal resources on your network from a remote location. It can also connect to the XG firewall using SSL or IPsec connections. First off, we'll cover the main difference between IPsec and SSL VPN. If you haven't already set this up, check out our resources in the video description. The main difference between IPsec and SSL VPN is that IPsec uses port 500 to create the tunnel to connect to the XG firewall, which provides a more robust security. However, port 500 is typically closed on home networks. It's also worth noting that IPsec can use port 4500, which is also used for NAT traversal. SSL VPN, on the other hand, can be configured to use a regular open port on home networks, such as 443. SSL VPN is also typically faster than IPsec. The Sophos Connect client can be installed on Windows 7 and above and Mac 10.12 and above. Now, before we install the Connect client, we'll need to download an SCX file from the firewall. You'll need to have IPsec or SSL VPN configured to download this file. To import an IPsec connection onto the endpoint, a connection file must be provided. The file that has the advanced settings has the extension .scx. You get this file by navigating to VPN, IPsec Remote Access, and select the Export Connection option at the bottom. Now that the connection file is generated, it can be distributed to users through email or GPO. In the event that certain users require a different configuration, the Sophos Connect admin client can be used to create as many SCX files as needed. To import the connection file, the user will have to install the Connect client on their machine. Before starting an installation, make sure that no previous versions of the Connect client are installed, and if there are, uninstall them before proceeding. We'll download the client by logging into the user portal and click Download Client. For the Windows installation, run the MSI file with an account that has permission to install applications. Accept the EULA, click Install, then click Finish. For Mac clients, the process is similar. Open the PKG file and click Continue. Select the disk for installation, click Install, and enter your credentials. If you see a prompt for access to system events, click OK. You can then close the installer. After the user has installed the Sophos Connect client and has the .scx, the user will need to click Import Connection. Once that's done, it's as simple as clicking Import and signing in. In the event that you're using an SSL VPN connection, the user will need to go into the user portal and select VPN, Download Configuration for Other OSs. An OVPN file will be downloaded that's imported the same way as the SCX file. Now, we'll go over the Sophos Connect provisioning file, which will eliminate a lot of the overhead of configuration files. The provisioning file is compatible with both IPsec and SSL VPN connections on the Sophos firewall, but only works if you're using Sophos Connect version 2.1 and above. If you've configured the IPsec remote access settings, the provisioning file automatically imports the SCX configuration file into the Sophos Connect client for all users. As for the OVPN configuration file, it only imports it to users you've assigned to an SSL VPN remote access policy. The reason that we recommend the provisioning file is because of these benefits. The SCX and OVPN configuration files are automatically imported to the user's endpoint. Any configuration changes that you make down the road are automatically imported. And if needed, you can specify more than one gateway as well as the priority of those gateways. Again, these features are only available if you're using Sophos Connect version 2.1 and Sophos Firewall 18.0 MR4 and above. To create and send a provisioning file, go to the following URL, which we've also linked in the video description, 
and copy the settings you require from the provisioning file section and paste them in a text editor, such as Notepad++. The only mandatory field is the gateway address. Once you've put together the fields you want to use, save the file with a .pro extension. Email the provisioning file to users or use a GPO. The provisioning file automatically imports the configuration files as follows. IPsec remote access settings, SSL VPN remote access policies, only for users specified in the remote access policies. Keep in mind, to prevent users from seeing a certificate error when the file is imported, you must create a new appliance certificate. Use a new certificate for the web admin console of the Sophos firewall. To do this, go to Certificates, Certificate Authorities, and download the default certificate. You must then push the default CA to users. The easiest way to do this is with an Active Directory GPO, which we've linked the steps for in the video description. Once the user has the provisioning file, they would just double-click it and enter their credentials. This will connect the client and pull the IPsec and or SSL VPN configuration. Note. If an SSL VPN profile is configured, the user will only see the public IP for that connection. This is going to be fixed in a future update of the Sophos Connect client. To increase the security of the Sophos Connect, we recommend you enable one-time password, also known as multi-factor authentication. This will ask for an additional piece of authentication for the users. To enable this, go to Configure Authentication multi-factor authentication. In this example, we will only enable OTP for one user. So we turn off OTP for all users and select our user. Then we enable OTP for the user portal, SSL VPN remote access, and IPsec remote access, and click apply. For the user to start using the OTP, they need to download the Sophos authentication app and access their user portal to activate it. Once they want to connect to the IPsec or SSL VPN profile, they will be asked to enter one of the OTP. To do so, you will type in your username and password, then append the six-digit OTP pin to your password in the password box. In this case, it would be password 672166. And at this point, you'll have the Sophos Connect client set up. All the links mentioned can be found within the video description. If you found this video useful, be sure to click the thumbs up button on TechVids or YouTube and check out the rest of our video library at techvids.sophos.com. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the community forums at community.sophos.com. Thanks for watching. This is Jay, signing off.